The following podcast is a production of Structure Tech, the most highly rated home inspection company in the Midwest. It takes a lot of work to maintain a home. Well worth it, of course. But how do you remember what needs to be done? A home maintenance checklist just might help you keep organized. Welcome, everybody. You're listening to Structure Talk. Well, fall is in the air, which means it's time to do a whole bunch of maintenance on your house, which doesn't sound like a lot of fun to me. But we thought we'd go through a list of all these really important things that should be looked at this time of year. We're going to spend the next few minutes with my co-hosts, Tessa Murray and Ruben Saltzman, getting to the bottom of your home maintenance fall checklist. So, Tessa, let's go with you. What is your top items that must be taken care of each fall? Gosh, there's a lot of things. And actually, Ruben wrote a blog on this. (laughs) We say that every single time. But check out out our website and check out his blog. It's great. It kind of highlights all the main things to take care of. But we'll talk about water, things to do with water, things to do with air, things to do with your roof, exterior, mechanical systems, all of that. Starting off, Ruben, do you want to talk about water-related things? Being in Minnesota, water is probably the biggest one. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you don't have water freeze. Any water in your pipes... Water uh, will freeze outside of your house. You know what? Yeah, we're going to let that go. (laughs) We're going to, we're going to let that water freeze, but related to your house, I mean, number one, I'm thinking about your outside hose bibs, Mm -hmm. your lawn faucets. Hose bib? For the normal listener, what does that mean, Ruben? (laughs) Silcock. No, just kidding. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) We call that an outdoor faucet. That's an outdated term, I feel like. That's an outdated term. Outside faucet. Okay. So the way to winterize those is you go down in your basement, you shut off the water at your shutoff valve, you go to the outside, you open up the outside faucet, and then you go back inside. And typically on your shutoff valve in the basement, you're going to have a little bleeder, a little cap that you unscrew. And depending on which way the pipe pitches, either water is going to go out of that hole and you drain it into a bucket, or air is going to enter into the hole and it's going to drain water out of the faucet at the outdoors. So that's like A1. Make sure that you drain the water out of your faucets. Do you think that those uh, little styrofoam caps that you see people put on the outside of their faucets really do anything, Ruben? You know, I, I think they're better than nothing. The, the whole idea there is that you have such a poorly insulated rim area that you have so much heat escaping through your wall that it's going to keep your faucet from freezing. And I've, I've heard from people who swear by them, who say they've had good luck with it. Personally, I don't like them. I would never rely on that thing. If I didn't have a, an accessible shutoff valve in my basement, I'd probably want to mm-hmm. have a, a plumber add one. And you know, you, you'll hear from people say, well, I've never winterized my faucet. I've never had a problem. Wonderful. Good for you. <laughs> I'm not going to rely on that to not have yeah. a freezing faucet. But uh, yeah. Just so, wait till they insulate their rim joist and then they will. Exactly. Exactly. That's when people have a problem is you insulate your rim joist. So do that. Even if you have frost free faucets, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean you're off the hook. You still have maintenance to do. Go out there and disconnect your garden hose because a a frost-free faucet is going to do nothing if you still have your hose attached. And then if you have a utility sink in your garage, be sure to drain the water out of the trap and be sure to winterize those water lines. I had to call the plumber to have my frost-free faucet replaced a couple springs ago because I had forgot to disconnect my hose that just happened to have (laughs) like the squirter thing on the end. So, And I thought, Uh, well, maybe I can get away with this. And when Whenever they redid the plumbing in my house, they didn't provide a shutoff valve to the exterior faucet. It was frost-free, and I forgot $350 later, I believe I learned my lesson, and I got an interior shutoff valve now. So (laughs) this stuff is real. I mean, I walked past it, and I knew I was in trouble because the little plastic thing that's on top of the silcock Mm -hmm. was all broke in pieces, so... It happens. Oh, Bill, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, the the last one for water is going to be if you have a, a lawn sprinkler system, technically called an irrigation system. If you got one of those, hire somebody to come and blow it out. And Bill, you were just telling me like 85 bucks. Is 85 what you pay bucks somebody regularly. and 15 minutes later. Thank you very much. I have nothing to worry about. Yeah. So and if you don't blow it out in the fall, it's going to leak like crazy in the spring. That's a really important part of having a sprinkler system. You water your lawn? Yes. In the sustainable urban core? Absolutely. Huh. Not often because you water infrequently and deeply, but you still need to make sure your grass is maintained. Okay. Hmm. The right. en- Bill the Enigma. Are you Tessa? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Your shrubs, your flowers, <laughs> things of this nature, they need to be uh, given you know, water. We, we love you, Bill. We love you. All right. that That's all I had for water. Tessa, I know your favorite part is air. You're, mm. you're all about energy in the home. Air flow is very important, especially when it has to do with your mechanical system. So most houses have something called combustion air intake. It's this like six inch flexible duct that just brings air from the outside into your, usually into your utility room in your basement. And it's just a passive duct that allows that fresh air to come in so that your furnace, water heater, boiler, whatever combustion appliances you have can work properly. So on the exterior of your house, you need to check that intake and make sure that it stays clean. So usually there's a metal cover, metal hood, and if you look underneath, there'll be this mesh screen. And a lot of times it gets completely clogged up with cotton wood and other things. And so if that's clogged, you, you don't have proper airflow coming in, proper combustion air coming in. So check that, definitely check that in the fall and maybe a couple other times a year. And with that too, if you have an air-to-air -air exchanger at your house, this would be you know newer houses or houses that have added that system. Usually, you know, people call it an HRV or an ERV system. There's also intakes and exhausts on those. And so if you've got that system, check the intake, and it usually it looks the same thing, just similar to a combustion air intake as well. So check that screen, make sure it's clean so that that air-to-air -air exchanger can work properly. And with those systems too, there's other maintenance you need to do and checking the filters on the inside of the HRV and ERV system and cleaning the core regularly too. And usually when you open up that the cover on those systems, the manufacturer will have the instructions on how to clean them and how to maintain them. So I'd say just yeah. open up your own HRV, ERV, and see what it says, but it'll tell you to wash the filters, wash the core, maybe once a year, check the filters regularly, clean those as needed. Seems and like the most neglected Oh, mechanical, it is. piece of mechanical equipment the, in any the, house. The only Nobody time knows I've seen, they open. No, no one knows they open. <laughs> and usually the only clean ones I see are ones that have been off and never turned on or ones that, yeah, people don't use or they're broken. Yeah. People don't maintain them. They need attention. And then two other things with related to air, check your dryer duct. Check where that lint comes out because a lot of times those just get caked with lint and the damper won't close properly and that's when you get air intrusion and pest intrusion. So clean that off. It's also a fire hazard. If you have a screen on it, remove the screen. Yes. I, you know what, this is this is an inspection fail. I'll tell you a short story. Oh, I, I was, know the story. I, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. I was doing an inspection for a very involved buyer and she was following me every step of the way really into it and we were on the exterior and I noticed that the dryer vent terminal had a had a screen on the end of it on the outside and it was completely stuffed with lint like stuffed where just the lint was coming out of the screen pushing out you know I'm sure that damper wasn't opening I'm sure the clothes weren't drying properly mm -hmm. um, and I pointed that out to the buyer and I said you know, you need the screen needs to be removed. That's a fire hazard. Next thing I know, I turn around for a second. She has climbed up my ladder and has taken off the screen on that dryer vent cover. Oh, it was on the roof? No, it was it was kind it of was high, high up, up on the, on wall. the oh. exterior wall. Yeah, and, uh, and I was like, well, it was too late. I was just going to let her do it, right? You know, they're not hurting anything. If anything, it's helping them, right? They're going to be happy when their dryer actually works. But little did I know, that transaction, I guess they decided not to move forward with buying that house for some reason, and the sellers were not happy about it. And and they contacted our company and complained about how we removed the pest screen from one of their vent terminals and how that was a big issue, right? They were mad. They were very angry about the removal of that screen. And it was not a thank you for, for reducing a fire hazard and improving the functioning of our dryer. It was a, we're really, really angry at you for, for doing that. So yeah, so check yes. your dryer exhaust and make sure you don't have a screen on them. I'm going to make you take a break. We're going to step away for a minute and oh, we come back. More. You can get back to your list. <laughs> Tessa, but we're going to step away for just one second. Thanks for joining us for Structure Talk, a podcast production of Structure Tech, the most highly rated home inspection company in the Midwest. Hi, everyone. Bill Ulrich from Structure Talk. We talk a lot about maintenance on the podcast. If you're like me, I'd rather be doing anything other than maintaining my house. The problem is, my neglectful nature can bring unexpected surprises. So what's a fantasy football fan like me to do? Punch! That's why I recommend Kira Home Maintenance. 
They actually like home maintenance and they're happy to do it for you. For a couple dollars a day, they'll keep your home on track. They free you up to enjoy your weekends. Check them out at curahome.com. That's K-U-R-A home.com. Gotta get back to the game. All right, we're back. Tessa, you've exhausted me uh, with this list you've gone through already. This is all from Ruben's blog. You know what? This is why I own <laughs> a condo fault. and I don't actually own a home, so I don't have to do all these I like things. It. <laughs> home ownership's no joke. It, it, you know, yeah. everybody thinks that they want to own a home, and I used to always just welcome people to the misery of a lot of work. Yeah. And so, are you sure you want to sign up for this? Your fantasy football and enjoying every Sunday in the fall to watch your teams and taking all the games that gets shelved in favor of you know doing this doing that yeah, anyway Tess totally. sorry I digress well this is the last thing on the list talking about air if you have bath fan vents or kitchen kitchen vents that vent out through the roof or through the side of the wall just check the dampers on those too because sometimes bees like to build nests inside there and that can keep the damper from opening properly and keep them from functioning the way that they should next topic would be the furnace and the air conditioner I got some great news on the air conditioner what's that you really don't need to do anything anything. You're good to go. Wait, you don't put the pretty little cover on and put the bungee cords around no, it and then no, put a piece of wood of on top of that just to make sure. No, that... if, if you want to, I mean, if you've got a bunch of leaves, a bunch of pine needles or whatever that are going to fall down and get inside the AC, yeah, God bless. Go ahead and get a piece of plywood and set it on top of your AC unit. Maybe even put a big rock on top so it doesn't blow away. But that's all you got to do. That's it. If the manufacturers actually design their units to where it wouldn't withstand winter, don't you think they'd tell you you need to put a cover? Of yeah. course they would. You don't need to do anything. I mean, if you do decide to put a cover on, fine, but just get the little cover, the one that comes down a few inches, because if you get the one that comes all the way down to the bottom and you totally wrap it, you can actually trap moisture in those things, and it can create a great place for animals and pests to create a home. So, no, put a piece of plywood on top, if anything. I love when people do that and nothing else. <laughs> they just don't <laughs> any other maintenance. You disconnected just... downspouts, but they have their AC all wrapped up nice yes good try <laughs> go back to the manual yeah start over so that's for ac you don't really need to do much now for your furnace or your boiler it is a good idea boilers and too boilers too Yes. If you have a fuel-fired heating appliance, it's a good idea to have annual maintenance done. And we would need another 20 minutes to get into that. That's a whole different topic. But I, I wrote a blog post covering that. Are annual furnace inspections really necessary? It was a topic there. And yeah, there's a lot of good reasons to have this done. This is not just some scam by HVAC contractors to get into your home to recommend further service. That's what a lot of people believe, but it's not true. There is a lot of value in having this done. So Ruben, What's the single most important reason to actually get these annual inspections done on your furnace? Because if you got a warranty and your furnace goes down and the, the HVAC company comes out, your warranty might not be in place. So do it. Excellent point, Bill. And then the one thing to always do with your furnace every fall and, you know, probably every three months or so, change your furnace check filter. Your filter. Oh my goodness. So that's filter. like the number one thing that homeowners don't do. And this isn't about having clean air. That's not why you change your furnace filter. You do it so you don't destroy your furnace. Gosh, we have some great epic photos of bad furnace filters on our website, don't oh we? Oh my gosh, yeah. We, we should have a blog post just dedicated just, to the yeah. worst furnace filters oh, we've ever found. Yeah, and, if, and sometimes dirty filters can actually cause your furnace to short cycle and to not work properly and to shut down. Yeah. So, okay, back up. Short cycle. You're, oh. you're talking All inspector right. no, geeks. We don't, yeah. we don't have That'll time. be another podcast. We're not even halfway through our list, man. Uh, it just means your furnace isn't running right. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. All right, so that's all I got for the heating. So, oh, wait, no, last one. I got to tell people this. Change the batteries in your thermostat. Mm. If your batteries run low and you decide to go out of town for a week and it doesn't have enough juice to kick on your furnace or your boiler, you might come home from vacation to a winter wonderland. So be sure to change the batteries in your thermostat. If because really double important. A batteries in triple A's or whatever A's are in that thing, you could shut your furnace down? Absolutely. Yes. Had that happen to me personally, I've had it happen to family members where we just came home and it was really cold. Mm. Thankfully, things hadn't frozen. Oh my gosh. And, you know, not all thermostats have batteries, but right. a lot of them do. So, all right. So sorry, I had to bring up that last thing. All right, Tessa, we're back to you. Yeah, roof. roof. Um, so you say rough, I rough. say roof. <laughs> 
I don't know if there's a right I way. I thought I said roof. We're building inspectors, I, not English majors. I don't majors. know how to pronounce I don't words. either. But, okay, so, and the soffit, the part of the roof that, that overhangs, if you look up, there'll be these vents, usually. And they can look different. Usually they're rectangular shaped, or they can be continuous, perforated soffit vents, whatever they are. You should clean those, because they also get clogged. And you want to have good airflow through the attic, help keep that attic cool, to help reduce potential for ice dams. And so, clean those soffit vents. And also, if you've got uh, static roof fence, the ones that look like a box, sometimes the design on those is such that birds can build nests in them. So just take a look. Usually you can look from the ground. If you see straw hanging out of that square roof vent along the peak of your house somewhere, get up there and clean that out. Again, it, it impedes airflow through the attic and reduces the amount of ventilation. One of the most important things we talk about is water management, right, you guys? So a big part of that is if you've got gutters, you got a gutter system and downspouts, making sure that those gutters stay clean. And so if you got a lot of trees in your yard, you know, that's something you definitely want to make sure that you do. So important. Yeah. So important. Can we expect a a blog from you, Ruben, about different options for gutter guards? Tessa, by the time this podcast airs, there will already be a blog post on gutter guards magical head to our website and read all about gutter guards so that's what you're doing over there you're typing up the blog post while we were talking about other things that's exactly <laughs> it. i'm not paying any attention to you guys I'm just so I'm, i was sitting here wondering Tessa, it's you're advocating people to climb up on their roof and check out their uh roof fence i mean that's homeowner well, she, of the uh, year award winning material if it's safe, if it's safe. Would, you know if it's safe you can go ahead and do that but that's up to every individual homeowner same thing with the gutters i mean if your gutters are three stories up and you're not comfortable how Hire someone to do it. Well, isn't um, it the most dangerous job in America, according to some commercials? Is that it? Oh. <laughs> There's actually one. <laughs> wow. I'm surprised you haven't run into that in your research. Yeah. And then the last thing with roofs, if you've got downspouts or if you've got a drain tile system with a sump pump that has a an extension out into the yard that dumps into an underground drain, make sure that that's uh, disconnected and so that that water doesn't back up and freeze and damage the downspouts or, or, or damage the sump pump. Okay, we're getting close to the end of this to-do list. When we come back, we're going to put a bow on it and then let you get back to the football game and enjoying life. Hi, everyone. Bill Ulrich here with Structure Talk. Do you live in a home that has a homeowners association attached to it? Here's an interesting nugget. In 2019, Minnesota passed a law that requires all HOAs have a preventive maintenance plan in place. What's that you say? I know, right? And what's necessary is clear as mud. At Structure Tech, we put together an affordable solution to help HOAs meet this obligation. If your association isn't talking about this, they should be. Check out how we can help at StructureTech1.com. We've been working closely with management companies all year to come up with a win-win-win to meet this new requirement. Let us know if we can help at StructureTech1.com. All right, Ruben, we're back. Let's wrap this up. I've got things to do. I know. I'm sorry, Bill. I'll tell you, Tesla was just talking about the importance of if you got one of those corrugated things on your sump pump discharge, don't leave it attached during the winter. Thank and you for saying that. I don't think I got into the detail. I saw Bill's face and I was trying to get through that. <laughs> <laughs> Bill's getting really annoyed. Bill doesn't <laughs> like owning a house. It's clear. No, I, I mean, have... let's go on vacation. Let's enjoy life. Life should be experienced. Not I know. spent toiling know. over horrible. these four walls and a roof. I'll tell you, I've... I had one of those corrugated things the first year I had moved into my last house and I, I come downstairs in the basement and I hear this this humming noise and it, it kept bugging me. I'm like, what is that? And I finally, I went to check it out. It's my sump pump running in the dead of winter and it's trying to pump water out of the out of the sump basket. But I had that corrugated thing at the outside of my house and it's completely filled with ice. The water's going nowhere. And so I probably took like five years off the life of my sump pump. <laughs> I think I told that story. In yeah. Our, our Luckily episode. you didn't. You didn't burn it out though, did you? I didn't, but I did have to replace it a couple years later. Oh, okay. So important thing to do. All right. Next topic was fireplaces. It's a good idea if you have a wood burning fireplace to have that inspected somewhat regularly. I mean, a a good rule of thumb might be every 30 to 50 fires. Get somebody out there to inspect it, make sure it's safe. They do it on the fire level, not necessarily time. That's interesting. That's interesting. Exactly. Yep. That's what'll make a big difference. And then if you have a gas insert, clean the dust out of the bottom of it. 
And eh, that's about it. There's not mu- not a whole lot else for fireplaces other than professional inspections. The gas ones can be tricky sometimes because if you just let them sit there all summer long, insects will get in there and they'll build nests or spider webs. And mm-hmm. so I got on this yearly maintenance program with Fireside Hearth and Home. I'll be happy to talk about it. They come out to my house in the middle of summer. They clean the gas fireplaces inside out, make it look all great. They turn on the pilots and tell me very sternly, do not turn these off until you start using them regularly in the winter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay, Bill, you'll be happy to know this is the last item. Perfect. Just general exterior stuff to, t- to take a look at. Take a walk around the outside of your house and look for any gaps or holes around penetrations that go through the wall. So like if you've got a, you know, AC unit, all the refrigerant lines, make sure that there aren't any gaps around those because that's how mice get into your house. Mouse highway. Oh, for sure. Soft Mouse highway. Soft and spongy and yeah. sticky. And, can, yep. and there's always a nice big hole. Yeah. If there's a gap by those things, yes. it's big because whatever, inch yep. and a half going through your house. So. Yep. So look around any penetrations. Make sure that you caulk or seal around all of those. Any caulking that's dried up or split, you want to make sure that you seal that back up again and if you've got you know weather stripping around doors or windows that's damaged or or loose or coming off you can always you know redo the weather stripping too and that'll help reduce air leakage and and save you money too that's awesome all right thank you for this great to-do list i'm (laughs) tired already thinking about it. me too me too i'm gonna go home to my condo and just relax all right i got a lot of work to do (laughs) thanks everybody for listening we'll catch you next time you've been listening to structure talk brought to you by structure tech the most highly rated home inspection company in the Midwest. For more information on how we can provide you with the right information about your home before you buy or sell, contact us at StructureTech1.com.